Hey, I'm Donald Bell with Maker Project Lab, and for a while now, I've been wanting to make a how-to video on getting started with the Raspberry Pi computer. And as luck would have it, I have a sponsor for this video, WD Labs, and they would like me to make a video on getting started with the Raspberry Pi computer. So things are gonna work out. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to unbox their WD Labs Compute Center, which is their all-in-one Raspberry Pi package. It includes the Pi and the keyboard and a mouse and cables and a hard drive and all the stuff you need to get started with Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna unbox that. I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna boot it up. I'm gonna show you a cool project that you can easily install and just hopefully help demystify the whole Raspberry Pi thing for you, okay? So let's get started. Let's open up this box. All right, so here I am unwrapping the WD Labs Compute Center package. You get a Raspberry Pi 3, a 375 gigabyte hard drive, a micro SD card preloaded with a custom version of the Noob software you'll need to set things up, a case for the hard drive in the Raspberry Pi, a USB to micro USB cable for power, a special data and power cable that chains together the Pi and the hard drive, a power adapter, a wireless mouse, a wireless keyboard, and then here it is all together, batteries included. All you have to bring is a monitor and an HDMI cable. Next step, I'm gonna put it all together. The included instructions map it out really clearly. Here's the Pi 3 unwrapped. First, I'm fitting the micro SD card into the Pi so I don't have to think about it later. I'm just placing it in this case here with the hard drive to see how it all fits together. And then I'm screwing the Pi down using the four torque screws and the driver which are included. I follow that up by using the four small Phillips head screws to secure the drive. That unique cable that I mentioned earlier for chaining the Pi and the drive together, here it is, connected up and fitting perfectly in the case. Now I'm taking out that USB dongle from the wireless mouse and putting it into an available slot on the Raspberry Pi. Then the lid for the enclosure just snaps into place using the embedded magnets. It's simple. Before connecting up to power, I connect this up to my monitor using an HDMI cable, and here we go! Right off the bat, here is the new out-of-the-box or noob setup that is unique to the WD Labs Pi Drive system. Instead of being limited to just one instance of your Pi software constrained on the Pi's micro SD card, here we can partition out the connected hard drive from multiple bootable profiles that you can juggle between. You should know that this is a one-time setup here, so don't skip it thinking that you can come back to it. By checking all the boxes and hitting install, I'm getting one fully loaded installation of the official Pi OS Raspbian, plus a partition for storage, five instances of Raspbian Lite, which is a bare bones command line OS, plus a bonus project space from the leftover storage. Every time you reboot this system, you'll briefly get a moment to pick which partition you want to launch. So you can have your game console on one, your media server on another, an educational OS for your kid on another, all running from the same Pi. I'm going with the first one, which is the full, uncompromised version of Raspbian. It's really pretty, and it behaves just like any desktop operating system you're used to. In the top left, you have a main launch menu for productivity software, games, settings, and other things. Next to that, you have a button for the browser, the file manager, command line terminal, and over here is Bluetooth, which auto-connects to the keyboard, Wi-Fi, which you'll need to configure, volume, and other things. If you do nothing else but this, you've got a capable, inexpensive computer. But we have these other project spaces to use, so let's challenge ourselves to see what life is like in the Raspbian Lite command line OS and see what we can do there. I'm rebooting and selecting project space one from the list. If you're unfamiliar with using command line, this is gonna feel like diving into the matrix as the text flashes in front of you, and it probably doesn't help that I'm speeding things up to keep this from being a 30 minute video. Just know that it takes a while to get the hang of it and I recommend having another computer open or your smartphone so that you can search for advice and commands that will get you where you wanna go. Your first test, the Pi is gonna ask you to sign in with your login and password. On any new Pi, login is simply lowercase Pi, P-I, and the password is lowercase Raspberry. For your next test, you're gonna see a command line prompt. WD Labs includes some useful documentation, but generally the trick is to know what you wanna accomplish and then ask the internet for help. In this case, I know that I can't do jack until I have the Pi connected to the internet. The simplest solution is to connect the Pi to your router over an ethernet cable, but to test out our skills, let's connect over Wi-Fi using command line. And seriously, to figure this out, I typed in 
connect Wi-Fi using command line on Raspberry Pi into Google, and I got more right answers than I could use in a lifetime. The short answer is that I just have to use the command line to open up the WPA supplicant configuration file by typing exactly this. I'm basically opening up a text file. Then I just type in my Wi-Fi router's name and password in at the bottom like this and close it out. It sounds simple, but the experience feels totally foreign for someone who is used to using a desktop interface, but it worked. I know it worked because for my next step, I use the command line to download the latest list of software available for installation. Then I use this command to upgrade all the existing software on my bare bones little system to the latest version. Those two commands in that order are a healthy habit for anyone downloading any new software for the Pi, which is what I'm doing next. By typing in sudo apt-get install Kodi, the Pi has all the info it needs to locate, download, and install the latest version of the open source Kodi media player, turning your Pi into a kind of highly customizable Roku or Apple TV type device. Once it's done downloading, I just type in Kodi into the command line and it launches. From here, I can load up my media or enable little add-ons for streaming podcasts or photos. I could just stop here, but realistically, I don't wanna to have to sign in over command line and type in Kodi every time I wanna use this. It would be great if it just booted into here or into a desktop interface, but stripped down to just Kodi so that I could use the extra room for media. Turns out that's pretty easy to do. So let's reboot. I'll launch the same project space, log in with Pi and Raspberry, and here at the command line, I'll type this to download X server, which acts as a kind of bare framework for the desktop interface. Once that's downloaded, I'll type this to get that pretty new pixel graphic user interface, the same one that's used on the full version of Raspbian that we saw at the beginning. With that installed, I'll reboot. I'll select Project Space 1 again, or just let it automatically launch my last used space, and boom, look at this. Instead of the command line and the login prompt, I'm whisked into this nice desktop, but with all the non-essential software stripped out. Cody's here though, up in the main menu, and now boom, I'm back in Cody, ready to customize and ready to think about what I might install in those other project spaces. All right, so those are the beginning steps of getting up and running with the Raspberry Pi and the WD Labs Pi Drive system. If you like this way of doing things where you get multiple project spaces that you can just uh, swap around on and install different kinds of projects on, you can get a Pi Drive accessory kit for just $29 and just add it to your existing Pi or you can spend $109 and get everything you need in that compute center box, the one that I showed you where you get the keyboard, the mouse, the Pi, the hard drive, the cable, the power adapter, all the stuff just thrown right in. If you have the money, I really recommend going that route because I've had so many Pi projects die on the vine just because I forgot a computer keyboard or something simple, you know? I hope this was a useful video. I hope that you're more motivated now to get out and sink your teeth into a Raspberry Pi project. I know it can be intimidating. Uh, I'm still intimidated every time I try to tackle something new with the Raspberry Pi, but the longer I do this, the more I realize that every problem I run up against is just a web search away from finding a solution because the Pi community out there is, is so great and there's so many amazing projects to try. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.